Well, good evening. And this um, audio is not for the faint of heart. It's not for the easily offended. It's not for... Oh, boy. It's probably not for a lot of categories. And it's probably a little bit vulgar in certain ways, but in other ways... (laughs) It's funny and honest. And it's my opinion, and I'm sure the opinion of many, many, many women out there, probably more than anyone cares to admit or realize... But, gentlemen, if you are not married or living with someone or in a um, relationship, um, and I'll I'll apply this to heterosexual men because I'm a woman that's heterosexual. Um, Okay, so that's the disclaimer. So, gentlemen, if you are... If you've been, let's, well, I'm struggling for how to word this. If you've been celibate for a while, except for Rosie Palm and her five friendly sisters, you are doing a disservice to the world. <laughs> you know, you should be using it while it works. You know, because you don't know that thing might be like, you know, Doing all kinds of things. You know, it has a mind of its own. Um, it might be doing all kinds of things morning, noon, and night on its own. Um, other times you might provoke it by looking at porn or whatever. Blah, blah, blah. Or being around a woman you're attracted to and whatever. Fantasizing. Blah, blah, blah. But you should really take advantage of it while it works. Because when you start getting older, it might not work or not not work as well. And then you've wasted a natural resource. You've wasted all that time playing with your weenie. Uh, Playing with your weenie instead of sharing it, you know, with the, the general population. And if you're really not interested in going through BS, um, like this one gentleman, you know, I'm not naming names. I'm thinking of several men. This isn't um, directed at one particular man that I've interacted with on here. Uh, Some more than others. (laughs) But anyway, um, um, what I was going to say, you know, I lost my train of thought, is... um, if it's still working, but you're you're just, like, not finding anyone that, you know, you feel like you can connect with or get something going with, go on Ashley Madison or Adult Friend Finder and find a horny housewife, okay? When I was 40 years old and I was single and, you know... I probably should have been on there, and I wasn't. And that was a waste of good libido. But anyway, um... (laughs) I don't think this is coming across the way I intend it to be. If you've got junk that still works really good, and you're not sharing it to me... You are doing a disservice. You are wasting a natural resource. And imagine if one day you wake up and it's not working and you have to take Viagra or... Well, I might as well tell you another dating story. Let me think. December. This is like Sophia Petrillo who would say Palermo, 1924. It was December of, maybe it was November. Yeah, yeah, it was November. November of 2007. Um, I belonged to a newly formed Twin Peaks fan club 
and there was like a um a 25th or maybe like a 25th anniversary re-release of a dvd but twin peaks was around in I don't know. I know it was out before 1990, so maybe I got the years off. But like there was like a milestone where they re-released the DVD um, of Twin Peaks. And I was a Peaks freak, okay? And so anyway, there was this Twin Peaks fan club that was being um, formed by a gay photographer in Park Slope, Brooklyn. And so anyway, and you had to sign up. It was through Meetup. And, um, you know, I really was into Twin Peaks big time when it was... I was going to name my second child Agent Cooper. And after he was born at Vassar Hospital in Poughkeepsie, I told them that <laughs> they wanted to get a psychologist. <laughs> and I had to get a TV in my room because I didn't want to miss Twin Peaks. Because I think they still had the season going at the time that I had the baby. So, okay. So, anyway, um, I, I signed up for this Twin Peaks fan club. And um, it was all men. And I was the only woman. Now, I think most of them were gay. The guy that was running it was gay. But I, I love gay men. I mean, most straight women love gay men. Maybe most lesbians love gay men. I don't know, but gay men are just. I I'm sorry if you're a gay man. I'm I'm giving you like a positive prejudice, but like gay men are like the best to hang with. So anyway, a bunch of us decided that we were going to. We were coming from different areas to go to this man's house in Park Slope. It was like a Twin Peaks party. So I had pictures someplace. I'm going to try to find them. I don't know where the hell they are. But um, this man had his brownstone, um, and it was renovated, decorated like the lodge. He had a framed picture of Laura. What was her last name? Laura. Oh. Um, well, anyway, that framed picture that they always had was on the mantle of his fireplace. And he had this big table with all the donuts set up, like how they had at the police station in Twin Peaks. And so what happened was, before the party, you know, it was like planned way in advance. It was like this big thing. Um, a bunch of us, like on the internet, said, we'll meet under the big clock in Grand Central, and then we'll take the train in together to Park Slope. And the photographer's name was Charles. We'll go to Charles's house together. That way we could ride the, tra ride the train together and then get to know each other and talk about Twin Peaks. So, um, I met oh God, a man named Mark who looked just like the guy from Law Richard Belzer from Law and Order. And there was another guy who was short and from Jersey, and I can't remember his name. So we're talking and laughing. We're riding the train. We get off in Park Slope. We walk a couple of blocks together. The guy that was having the party was really great. There were all these gay men there. Or I think they were mostly gay men. And I'm the only woman. And so I was kind of laughing. I didn't say, oh, you're all gay and I'm, you know, the only woman. But, like, anyway, so I'm at this party and, like, we're laughing and we're having a good time and... You know, and then he was going to play the the, the, C, the DVD, I guess. And um, and we were going to watch it and then talk about it. It was just all Twin Peaks, right? And I think it was the pilot episode that we watched. It was the re-release of the pilot. So, I'm thinking, well, this is all a bunch of gay men. And I noticed one of them started following me around a little bit. Mark, who I met under the big clock in Grand Central. Then when we went to sit down, he sat next to me and 
uh, blah, blah, blah. We took the train back together to Grand Central. And, you know, we were like friends. And I was a little naive. And I thought, oh, wow, he's a gay guy that's not in a relationship and likes having a female friend or whatever. And I think we exchanged emails or emails and phone numbers or whatever. And then, like, the next day, he... he contact me and said oh I had such, such fun it was really great meeting you they're gonna be lining the tree in Rockefeller Center like next week it was like you want to meet in the city and go it would be a lot of fun so I'm thinking that it's a gay guy that wants to hang out so I go and then we're having all this fun no pressure whatever and all of a sudden I realize he's not gay and I'm on a date and he's into me and I really liked him. I really liked him. He was like a friend. Like, I felt more like a friendship with him than a, um, I feel like I'm giving the wrong impression. I felt like it was more like a friendship for me than a sexual thing. But anyway, and I, you know, and I was like kind of just taken aback, everything kind of, but I really liked him. I didn't want to not be around him or whatever. So we started seeing each other, but like he was like not, he was not being forward with me. And um, we really hit it off. And um, then he starts telling me about his tax return. And then he says he wants to get married and he wants to use his tax refund to put a down payment on an engagement ring. Our third date was, he took me to a Broadway play. We went to see the um, Phantom of the Opera and we ate um, at like really nice restaurants in Manhattan. And um, I was gonna meet his mother and um, his mother knew Trixie from the Honeymooners. They were friends. Um, the mother ha had like, was a, a, a cabaret singer when she was younger. And she was friends with Eileen Fulton who played Lisa on As the World Turns for many years. Trixie from the Honeymooners, his mother and one other lady, they had lunch every week in like fancy restaurants like 21 and the Russian Tea Room and blah, blah, blah. His mother was widowed. And um, she never hit it big. And the other lady didn't. But the other two were Eileen Fulton and Trixie from the uh, Honeymooners. So, um, and he said that I could meet them. And they would probably even t let me come to lunch with them one time. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> Wait till my mother hears this. Because she loved As the World Turns, right? So I almost got engaged to him, and what happened was he wasn't trying to have sex with me. And, but like, you know, we were affectionate, and I thought, well, maybe he's just taking it slow. He was divorced, had no children. And then, you know, I, I was like, you know, I just didn't know what to make of it. And so one day, not, and it, this all kind of transpired in a short period of time. He um tells me that he has a problem. Now, this is back in 2007, and he was the same age as me, so he wasn't that old. And that um he had, like, a, a problem with his, you know, with his penis. And that he was making an appointment, or he had made an appointment after being with me and meeting me. He was making an appointment with the urologist because he wanted to get a penis pump implant, like a penile implant. And I freaked out. The thought of it, and the thought of, like, the pressure I would have on, you know, the, the relationship pressure of him and the, the implant. And I just felt like, I don't know, I couldn't handle it. And I ended up, like, easing out of the relationship. And I felt really bad because I adored the man, you know. But I know it hurt him and everything. But, see, if you're functional, like, there's no reason for you to not be using it, you know, at least on a part-time basis. And if you're not, if, if you're functional and you're not, 
I mean, I can understand if you don't want to use it on Sophia Petrillo. Ugh. No. But, I mean, I'm sure there are plenty of women out there that would you would find, you know, reasonably attractive that would probably be happy to oblige without putting too many demands or restrictions on you or whatever. But anyway... <laughs> Oh my goodness, um, the title says it all. <laughs> anyway, gentlemen, please stop withholding your erections. <laughs> Have a lovely evening and go out and get laid. Bye.